Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Backseat Drawing Workshops. I'm Eric. And I'm Josh. And uh, hey, Eric, I'm curious. You've got this Jolteon picture here. How did you do that lightning effect? It's actually pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, it is actually. Um, if you're using Photoshop, I think that you could probably emulate this technique in some other platforms. But in Photoshop, it's kind of an easy effect because you actually just use a bunch of layer effects and layer styles to do it. So I'll show you how to do it now. Hmm. Uh, a, lot of programs, a lot of programs do have layer effects, so there's a lot you can do there. Yeah, there, that, like I said, there's probably a way to do it. It may not be as the same as I'm about to show you here, but mm -hmm. there's there. I know that a lot of like layer styles and layer effects are something that other programs can do. So yeah. there's probably just going to be a couple of words that are different. But anyway, Josh is talking about the lightning that's kind of around Jolteon here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to demonstrate that. But I'm going to kind of show you on this orb. And these effects generally show up better if they're on some sort of a color that's not just white or black. Um, they or, a really... good, or a good complementary color like purple. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, if you're using yellow for the lightning or white, it's going to show up really well on a purple, which is why I, I picked a purple object. But yeah, they show up really well on something that's not just pure white because they require that you use layer effects and layer styles. So... Um, right. I'm going to be changing that stuff, and if it can't interact with a good color on the bottom, it's not really going to show up as well. But you can do it. It's just not going to have the same effect, I guess. But the first thing I'm going to do is actually on a new layer above all of your objects, and let's just say that the orb is my object here, um, I'm actually going to use a lightning brush that is in my brush pack, and it is right and you here. Can get that, you can get that brush pack in probably the description below. Yeah, in the description below, it links to this brush pack. So if you want to grab that, it's free to use. So I'm going to use it. It's on the like rat last row there. It's actually next to the... There's a variation of lightning effects, but I'm going to use this one for this purpose because it's kind of a single strand. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way it works, if I kind of make it a little bit bigger here, is like as it moves across the screen, it's kind of like turning and rotating and just kind of like so adding... It's, it's it's jittering and size and sh and rotation. And rotation, like. yeah. And and the spread and is also opacity. random. Yeah, and based on how hard you're pressing with your tablet pen, it's either very opaque or kind of light. So let's say that this orb is shooting out this effect, you know, like maybe a little bit like here, it's cluster up, and then it shoots out, and then Ooh. maybe over here it's cluster up and kind of shooting out in this direction. So right now it, it already has kind of a lightning look to it because the brush kind of gave it to you, but what we want right. to do is add the magic, basically. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this uh, blend mode down to, um, sometimes it's color dodge, sometimes you can go lighter color. I'm going to do linear dodge, uh, and it kind of does this thing where it kind mm -hmm. of, like, remember how I said it doesn't always look good with a white <laughs> background. You can see the variation here in the color, like where it's over the purple here, it kind of turned white, whereas it kind of retains some of the uh, uh, yellow hue as it goes into the background. So the, the blend mode is how that layer is interacting with layers beneath it? Right. Interacting with the colors of the layers beneath it. So if like, I change colors. it for overlay, overlay kind of really like goes a little more transparent and allows a lot of the color bleed through to happen up from the bottom layers. And it's a lot different than just setting the opacity down because it's really dependent on the color that it's seeing underneath the effect. So, but we're and for, each, each of the blend modes is referring to like a different algorithmic Yep. interaction, right? Yeah, and I'll, almost every painting or photo editing program will have something like this. But yeah. you can play around with what you think looks best. We're just going to use uh, Linear Dodge for this one. All right, so we're going to open up our layer style palette for this particular layer. And the one that I'm going to use, and Photoshop's going to try to already add the thing I, I just did, we're going to go <laughs> to Outer Glow. Because Lightning produces its own light, so we want to make it appear that it's doing this thing by basically giving it some fuzziness from the light it's projecting from itself. So we're going to go down to Outer Glow, and we've already got like a little bit of it Ooh. happening here. Uh, let's try to get this out of the way just a bit, but you can still see it. <coughs> And what I like to do is make sure it's not just literally just white. You know, it's just like this white. And you can do that, but I like to add a little color to my lightning. So I, a lot of times I actually do it in red. I like to add a little bit of grease to my lightning. Nice. <laughs> 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 you get, I'll either do like a red or a blue. 
Um, but you can, like, mm-hmm. while you're sitting in the palette, you can actually move it up and down and see what what really works for you. Maybe it's, like, this bluer effect and it has kind of more magic in it. But like, we're going to just use, like, a reddish effect because I think it really works well with, like, the yellow and the, the pink yeah. and the purple I already have. Uh, and then from here, you can just start tweaking some of the adjustments, basically, like, the spread. If you want it to really spread out and look like the light Ooh. is really being thrown, no. you can do that. You no. can just sort of spread down <laughs> and then adjust the size which will show it in a little like fuzziness and a little detail so you can see it kind of affecting everything there. Uh, I kind of like, like it. Hmm? it. It seems like from here you could start like masking over some of the lightning and, and figure out a way to like interact fog effects and stuff. Yeah, to, to and really you can. So let's just say I want mine to be just a little more on the subtle side because then I can have a more fine control by doing exactly like what Josh is saying. Basically go down and let's just go to like a big airbrush here. Uh, let's set this particular layer to overlay that one that we tried using earlier Ooh. and in some choice areas with a yellow maybe yellow orangey color uh let's go ahead and touch up some of the areas where the source oh. of that lightning is happening so now that area is kind of glowing and the effect seems like that's where it's coming out of and then we can also add a little bit of part uh particles so it looks like it's throwing off even more this is a different brush that also has its own randomness yeah, same thing to it. Just a different texture brush. So it's like throwing off a little bit of that. I'm going to add just a little bit more in here. And it really looks like it's just blowing off of that. And it looks really cool. But there's a lot you can do here. You can tweak it. You can actually cut down on the amount of lightning that's being thrown off. Let's say, like, as it's getting further, it's kind of going into the background. Or maybe it's not as strong right here. And all of those adjustments are based on your personal taste. But the effect is the same. And, of course, the effect can be applied to non-lightning things. Maybe it's just magic. Uh, I have other brushes that I call magic brushes, but <laughs> I, they basically do like random effects. And this is, I'm using the same layer. So the same style is affecting this uh, object I just put down. Like if I turn it off, you can see it's just kind of a, a ribbon. Turn it back on. You can see now it's glowing again. And uh, other brushes that kind of do the same. So here's a lot of like little magic elements you can all do with the same lightning effect. Mm. Yeah. This is how you would do the Chidori effect from Naruto. Yes, I actually know what that is. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I <Yay>. do. <laughs> it sounds like a bunch of birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like any like magic effect or like maybe someone's casting a spell in their hand. You can kind of robe their hand in the same effect and even apply the effect to a little bit of their skin. And it looks like their skin is casting its own light. But now, have fun with it. Yeah. If I use this on water, would I get electrocuted? I guess if you are a water type, this might be pretty damaging. No. The answer is no. Water doesn't really <laughs> do anything to connectivity. <laughs> it's a false thing. It's a lie that Pokemon has perpetuated. Is that the end of the tutorial? <laughs> it is. Okay. We hope that this helped you, and we will see you on the next episode of Backseat Drawing Workshops. Smell you later. Yeah.